Greetings and afternoon, family. Greetings and afternoon to each and every one of you. I'd like to begin by extending my heartfelt sympathies to the entire Stoddard family and all extended families of our dearly beloved brother. As we prepare our celebration of life, course we see that family is fully accommodated unfortunately with the COVID-19 protocol now across New York City we met our standard we want to welcome all of those near and far across the miles and the live streaming we also would like to publicly apologize if any of you felt delayed we thank you for hanging in with us unfortunately there was an unfortunate event prior to the service, but we're grateful that we all can be here to gather and celebrate our beloved brother's life. Pastor Isaac R. Cool will be officiating the service. We're going to welcome him down now. And we also have our Minister of Music, Reverend Kevin Wade, on the organ. I will come back towards them once more as we conclude with the final viewing, and at that point, we'll also prepare ourselves to journey forth. Kensico Cemetery where the committal service will take place as well as military honors. Once again, my heartfelt sympathies to your family. Pastor Isaac, please. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon, family and friends. Today is a special day as we come together to honor and uh, share the life of our dear beloved Herbert Stoddard as we call Tony. We thank God for the life that uh, he gave to him. Tony and Lelin have been family friends for many, many, many years. And I'm here officially to express our condolences to the entire family, my sweet mother-in-law, 
who is not here, Aunt Karen and her husband, Desmond Wellington, Florida, and the entire family, we express our sincere condolence to you all for the loss. Shall we please rise up together and bow down our heads as we pray? Sovereign Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, ever thou hast formed and established the world from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In thy divine calendar, you knew that today, February 13th, 2021, we come together as a family to honor the memory and also to celebrate the life of your servant, Herbert Trotter. We thank you for the years you gave him to us, to the family, and to the nations that he called dearly. We pray, Lord, that our hearts are touched. We are saddened, we are grieved. The wife, the children, the siblings, Oh God, the nieces, the nephew, the aunt, and the entire family and friends are aching. But we ask for grace and strength and comfort as you begin this day. Be a strength, be a guide, be a comfort. We thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, please. The Trinity 33, 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge. And Underneath are the everlasting arms. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18 reads, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. Even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel and the throne of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the earth. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. At the time, we have a selection from Mr. Kevin.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for watching virtually. <coughs> Those in Angola, New York, wherever you might be. This morning, my older brother Antoine asked me if I was going to be nervous. My answer was no, because I'm, spe I'm speaking in front of you all, my family. I'm looking at my father now, and just seeing his gray hairs amazed me. At home, my father's hair never turned gray. He always made sure that my mom put some sort of gel to make it black. I remember January 19th like it was yesterday. I was in the shower and my cousin Jadisha called me. She told me that my father's heart stopped and my mom was in the emergency room at the time. I hopped out the shower and ran to the hospital. I saw my mom in the main lobby of the hospital just there crying with her hands out. In my head, I kept saying, no, no, please, dad, be alive. I want to be there because there's still hope if I'm by your side. I looked at my mom's open, open hands and just had to cry. You ever just hug your mom and feel like crying? It was that kind of hug. I just remember crying as we went up the elevator to the room where they kept him. As I walked by, I saw all the other patients on ventilators or what's not. Then I finally saw my father who I haven't seen in over a month. My mother went to see him almost every day. And if she wasn't there at the hospital, she was checking in every two hours. I just didn't want to see my father suffering because it was just a new experience for me personally. I always told myself the next day, the next time I see my dad, I'll be right in front of the hospital taking him home. I walked into the room and I just didn't, I couldn't believe it was, it was actually him. His face was so swollen. And after two minutes, I didn't see that anymore. I saw my father. I looked at the monitor and saw his heart beating. So I just began to speak to him. I kept saying, Dad, we got to prove all these doctors wrong. They told me that you might not make it, but I know you can. Dad, you're the strongest man I know. Throughout the whole process, I only cried once because 
family and friends around me gave me strength. I love you, Dad, and I will never stop loving you. I'm 17 years old now, and you ain't never walk out on me. You are always by my side, and I'm by yours now. I will take care of Mom and try to keep family together, because I know that's what you, are, that's what you would have wanted. Everyone couldn't be here with you, but they all loved you. I'll never let your legacy die out. This year is going to be a hard year, but I'll push through it. Love you forever. The next morning, reality hit me. My father was really gone. I remember walking into, into my room and looking at his license card. I saw his face and just started to cry. My, my Auntie Hyacinth called me later that night and heard my voice. I remember her crying, saying, my sweet brother. She said that I sound just like him. If, she, if I didn't say it was Tyree, she would have thought it was my father speaking to her on the phone. During this moment, I told myself, maybe this is a sign for my father. His voice is my voice now. I speak for him now. When I have children, they will, they will know how good of a man he truly was. There was another day in January when my mom told his friend Dave that my father had passed away. Dave couldn't believe it and just kept crying on the phone. I told her, pass me the phone, I'll speak to Dave. I said, Dave, my father is gone, but he's, he, was tr he was strong until the end. Dave, he was my father too. That's what Dave said to me. He was my father too. <clears throat> Him and Dave are basically the same age. And this just amazed me because my father was a father figure to many people just by having simple conversations with him or just giving you advice. My father always spoke about having a good education and to always follow your dreams. He wanted the best for everyone and motivated people to get the job done. My father was always working. One day it was a 24 hour shift at the hospital. The next day it was working at, at the house in the Bronx. My dad was always somewhere working on another project which he gave himself. Another special moment in my life was when we had a started family reunion in California. I was able to meet all his siblings sitting in one room along with some of my cousins. On the last day, we gathered around and the siblings spoke about how, how they loved each other and my grandmother. For the first time, I saw my father cry. At that moment, I knew it was okay to cry. Men may not show it, but they cry too. I don't like to cry because I give others strength around me. However, now I may cry out of the blue because I miss my father and his impact on the world. It's okay to let out the tears and not to hold in your pain. I used to talk to myself in the shower after he passed away. I imagine this moment here and how I, I give my tribute to my father. I look at pictures of my father now and it brings back so many memories putting a smile on my face. I appreciate the fact that God gave me the opportunity to be there and speak to my father during his last breaths. I wish to see my father in my dreams someday. I want to have a conversation with him. We could talk about anything. I just want his words of encouragement and him telling me that I'm going to be a successful young man. There was a time when I was younger, I was like four years old. I fell, floor, I fell down four flights of stairs and I just kept crying there on the floor. My mom was going to pick me up, but my father said, my father stopped her. He told her, let, let Tyree get up. And guess what I did? This story shows that my father wanted me, to, wanted me to be a strong man, and I will be. The last words my father ever told me was, everything is going to be all right, T. I'm going to make it. I love you. In the end, my father did make it. He made it to the Lord. My dad is now at rest. And, it, and isn't suffering anymore. He's a good man and, for, and will forever remain in my heart. God is taking care of my father and another angel just entered heaven. <coughs> Thank you and love you all. Last thing, if you ever want to talk to me, please stay in touch. My father always wanted for me to speak to you all and I'll try my best to do so. Once again, love you all. Thank you.
Hi, hi everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being at my brother's uh, funeral procession. This is a tribute I wrote to, it's called A Tribute to My Brother. My brother Hubbard Stoddard was part of a family of three brothers and eight sisters, siblings who loved him immensely. As a family in general, his loss has left us severed and broken. We will never be the same again. The only comforting feeling left for us are the many pleasant memories, his humorous demeanor, his contagious laughter, and his commitment to family. Oh, what a brother. Even though he was born a decade after me, it did not prevent us from having or engaging in many competitive activities. We played a lot of basketball. We stayed up late many nights playing dominoes and cards. We played pool billiards, of which he was very skilled. When we were together in Anguilla, our mother's birthplace, we always found time to go up along where we enjoyed fishing for balahoos. We had a lot of fun. Then there was the occasional sibling family get together where he undoubtedly stole the show. We interacted with our older and studious brother, Rudolph, our beautiful and caring sisters, Anita, Hyacinth, Gladys, Elvira, Olive, Norma, his twin sister, Lettuce, and Jennifer. We enjoyed each other on those occasions. Any future such occasion will probably not be the same without him. The Almighty chose to take him away from us, and he's in the presence of our dear angelic mother bee. He was a caring and loving husband to his dear wife, Lorene, a devoted and engaging father to his sons, Cleve and Clary. They will miss him also. His many nieces and nephews affectionately called him Uncle Hubbard, or just Uncle. He was admired by many friends <coughs> who will certainly miss his companionship. Specifically, he counted Landville and Yvette Harrigan and their families as special friends. In fact, he often referred to Landville as not only a friend, but a brother. Thank you, Landville. As mere mortals, we accept that he was taken away to a better place. But it has never left us, but it has left us with, a, with an emptiness that is so consuming. May God bless his soul, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the dawn of morning. <coughs> Rest in peace, my brother. Hamilton started and his family. Those of you who don't know me, I am number seven, Allah. Olive, but he calls me Allah, very special name. And I'm here to do a tribute for my brother. Last year, when COVID was killing people left and right, we called our brother and had some texting with him and this is what he said to us. Thanks, my sisters. I really appreciated the call. No need to worry. We need all the prayers we can get. A lot of us will get it, and some of us will die. I think it will be survival of the fittest. It's a good thing we grew up knowing God. In him, our faith is now stronger. I have no fear. I have no fear. I think this is my calling and I am waiting. I am willing to do whatever it takes to save lives, including sacrificing my own. 
with that said, I will be okay. I will I will be protected both by Beatrice, my mother, and God. He already has my life pre-planned. So keep the faith and continue to pray. As I said, I have no fear. In God, I trust. On November 27, 1959, the world was blessed with the birth of fraternal twins, Lettuce and Herbert Stoddard, at the Sufisan Hospital in Curaçao, the Netherlands Antilles. They were a bundle of joy and adorable as can be. In October of the following year, right after Hurricane Donna struck Little Anguilla with its high force winds, our mother, Beatrice Stoddard, left Curacao with all her children and went to Anguilla. The twins were still babies trying to get up and walk. Hubbard's first steps were made in Anguilla, the place he called home sweet home. Hubbard grew to really love Anguilla. Hubbard attended East End Primary School at the age of five. He loved school and could not wait to start high school. When he took the entrance exam to go to high school, he aced it and was promoted. Herbert attended high school in Anguilla until he moved to St. Thomas with his mother. He was passionate about his education, so he continued his education at night classes until he received his high school diploma and in his latter years, insisted that his children, nieces, nephews, and friends take advantage of, of, of opportunities to advance their education. Herbert always, Herbert always made an effort to care for others. He loved playing doctor while tending to his siblings when they fell sick. He was fiercely protective of his sisters and nieces. Too protective if you ask me. He also cared immensely for other family and friends. After high school, he would make his first major act of sacrifice and service by joining the US Navy. Before departing for tours overseas, Herbert got a little busy, which later on made him a daddy. The most handsome little boy was born and named Cleve Winston Stoddard. Cleve gained all the charm, wit, and charisma of his father. There was a special bond between Cleve and his dad, and he often referred to him as my little smart son. When Cleve moved to New York, to live with his dad and aunt Lett, he was showered with so much love and attention. After completing high school, he went into the technical field. Herbert's family prayed earnestly for him and his safe return from the service. Herbert always recalled his time in the Navy and, and, and recounted many stories about his travels and the things he witnessed, whether they were good or bad. He was grateful for how the experience shaped him. As busy as he was, he raised Troy and Antoine, whom he proudly called his sons whenever he introduced them to anyone. Herbert gained a lot of experience while on duty in the Navy for 14 years as well as working at the New York Presbyterian Hospital for six years. During his time at the New York Presbyterian Hospital, he worked as a phlebotomist and an EKG technician in the pre-admitting department. It was during this time in 1997 that Hubbard le met Lurleen, another dedicated worker at the New York Presbyterian Hospital. The pair fell in love 
And in June 2003, his pudding, affectionately called by him, gave him gave birth to their son, Tyreek. Herbert doted over the new baby and was very proud of his four boys. Herbert and Lurleen later got married on August 29, 2009. When Tyree grew up to be a teenager, Hubbard became very proud of his accomplishments in school, and Tyree was awarded many vacations, and the one he loved most was when he was in Landville with Landville and family. Tyree grew to love Anguilla very much. Hubbard gained, Hubbard earned his Bachelor of Science degree in 1992 from Malloy College. Hubbard had great aspirations to do more to help others and embarked on a new career as a doctor's assistant. This career change allowed him to use his new skills at other institutions that valued his service and dedication. Herbert, who was also known as Tony, worked at the Westchester Medical Center for the past eight years and at the Wellpath Westchester Correction Facility for the past six years. Although Herbert had a hectic schedule between jobs and family life, he found time to volunteer his services and give back to his hometown of Anguilla. Herbert was a family man and a jovial one as well. He was not only the greatest and fearless frontline provider, but he was a loving husband, a devoted father, grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, cousin, and mentor. His kindness, expertise, boundless knowledge, and warmth awarded us all. His co-workers claimed they were the better people for having known Herbert and working with him. Herbert stayed close to family and friends but close, stayed close to, to anything and everyone that reminded him of home. He developed a close bond with Landville and Corbin Harrigan that they became the brothers he chose for himself. He opened his home in New York to the Anguillan community, community and to those traveling out of Anguilla. He became son, brother, and uncle to everyone in Landville's family. Herbert also loved music, evidenced by the studio he had in the basement of his home in New York, where he hosted many socials for friends and Anguillians living in New York. He was also the manager of an Anguillan band called the Revolution Band. Hubbard Tony's passion had always been to help and support others. Hubbard unselfishly offered his time to look out for the other person's well-being, risking his own life, which has brought us to this place of sorrow. The, reali the realization of Hubbard's death was an emotional lightning bolt to the brain. This passing has given his siblings a fresh new significance to every moment life gives us and to every opportunity time affords. We do believe that God shall wipe away every tear from our eyes and though today we find ourselves experiencing seasons of long goodbyes, 
our trust in Christ's death and resurrection promises an eternity of hell old. Sleep on our dear brother. We know you would have wanted it this way. Father, we thank you that you are the living God who gives everlasting life. I pray that you would use our eternal hope to comfort us in our season of loss and grief. God bless you. Uh, my name is Antoine. I'm the proud son of Herbert Tony Stoddard. I live in Miami Beach with my soon-to-be wife, Desiree, my daughter, Yana, and my son, Golden. Uh, when I first stepped place in here, my auntie said to me, she said, boy, you look fresh. I said, well, little did she know, everything I got on from my jacket to my tie to my socks to my shoes is coming out of my father's closet. You know, and that's how my father was. He'll give you the, the clothes off his back. And just like how I wear his clothes on me right now, I wear my father inside of me, inside of my heart, and inside of my mind. And I did that before he was passing. Um, you know, my father was a great man in everything he did. You knew he was great when the prime minister spoke at your, your funeral. And i really like to thank the prime minister for his heartfelt words on my father's character. It really touched my heart. And, um, in order to tribute to my father, I could stay up here and say a million words. I could stay up here for a whole week and talk how about a great man my father was, but I chose to do a tribute in a poem. The name of my poem is called, My Father Who Art in Heaven. My father is the president of my family tree, and he earned way more respect than anybody. And I never met anyone like my dad at before. He remained the same whether he was rich or poor. Way too much swag my dad had. So cool and smooth, he was bad. Not just a hero, but my role model, my general that I saluted and followed. You his friend, you his family with no fears. And it was a bond that lasted for years. My pa was a Marine, he was so brave. A master at life and never a slave. A hustler by nature, he always got paid taught me construction like it was a trade. A surgeon cared for the healed and healed the sick, gave sight to the blind and kept an iron stick. Loved to put a roof over people's heads, make it up to you, make it up for you, and let you sleep in his bed. His yes was his yes, and his no was his no. Nobody could stop him, he was always on the go. There for you when life knocks you down, and when you sad, he became your personal clown give you the shirt off his back and iron it. The humblest man, and ain't no denying it. My dad was a member of the chosen few. Had just six, asked him for a dollar, and he gave you two. In a concrete jungle with a lion's heart, sly like a fox, wise old owl in the dark, taught West Indian principles and morals. In his heart you find Anguilla's ocean corals. God and family was his highest priority, providing, protecting with meek authority. Fought evil and feared no one but God. In trouble, he came to your aid like the squad. The life of the party and a spectacular host. All the way on the other side of town. And he was with you like a ghost. Stayed on a 24-7 positive vibe. With him, life was an amusement park ride. A righteous human, to me he was perfect. Forget Mike, I want to be like Herbert. I am my king's prince, he molded me into the, to a man. Showed unconditional love to all the fam. I missed him so much, even before he was gone. In my head, he will always sing that song. Don't worry about a thing, cause every little thing is gonna be all right. He is my father, my brother, my best friend, who I shall love all the way to my end. A preacher to everybody, but no reverend. My guardian angel is my father who art in heaven. And I like to end this poem 
and say that my father really loved Anguilla. He loved it so much, he made me love Anguilla more than America, where I, where I was raised at. And I also like to say, Lambu, I really appreciate you, and I ain't calling you Uncle Lambu no more. I got a new name for you, it's Dada. Thank you, everybody. Everybody. start off by thanking you. Honestly, saying thank you at this point really, really isn't enough for the amount of gratitude that I have for you. At the age of four, you allowed me and my mother to stay with you here in New York. You helped raise me like your own daughter, along with your son, Cleve. I grew to learn that you showed tough love. Years ago, you asked me what I wanted to do with my life, and I told you about how I dreamt to be a professional choreographer one day and own my own dance studio. You then asked me if I was sure, because other careers were making way more money. There was even a point when I was 18, you told me you didn't want me working because you wanted me full time in school. As a child, I didn't understand those words of wisdom as much as I do now. You knew I had way more potential and could dream bigger. For that, I thank you for believing in me. Just as you saw the potential in me, I see the potential in my little cousin Tyreek. Cleve will forever be looked at as my brother, and so will now Tyreek. This is hard for me, because you are the first of my mother's siblings to pass. So this isn't an easy process. Uncle Herbert, you may not have been able to see Tyreek walk down the aisle to receive his diploma, but I promise you, I will. I want to thank you for bringing my family together again for so, after so many years. I was able to see aunts, other uncles, and cousins that don't reside in New York now. I grew to understand you were a family man, and family meant the world to you. For that, I will make sure this family sticks together and continues, and we will continue our family gatherings throughout the years. You have made me a proud niece to learn that at the age of 61, you were still working two full-time two full jobs at a hospital and at a correctional center while still balancing family matters. Never once was I unappreciative for anything you have done for me. For that, I promised to help my mother to maintain things on Fox Street, just as you wanted her to do. The house on Fox Street was your family house, and you were a family man, and promising to make sure everything continues to run smooth in the household is the least I can do as your niece that grew up in that house as well. You were respected by many, and may, maybe had even come off intimidating at first impression. However, getting to know who you really were as a person, as my uncle, as, a, as my father figure, you were a special individual who everyone grew to love and catch laughs with. That day at the hospital, as I watched you laying there, my heart ached. For the, time in my, for the first time in my life, I saw you in a vulnerable state. I knew you as a strong man. And I knew that you would want to me, you would want me to be strong for you. I haven't lost someone close to me in so many years. As I watch my mother cry for her twin brother, my heart shattered. But I know you are now above with my dear grandma B, watching over all of us. I hope we make you proud as much as you have made us proud and honored to have a strong, loving man part of your, in our family. Love you, your niece, Kyra. tribute to Herbert started. I would like to say a few words about my friend Herbert. He and I have been friends for many, many years. He has always been there when I needed him and I will miss him dearly. Herbert was hardworking, intelligent, caring, and very thoughtful person. He was very close to my children and family. One of Herbert's best traits 
was that he always lived his life to the fullest and loved to laugh and smile. Whenever I was feeling down and needed a friend to lean on, he was there for me. It is impossible to put into words the importance of friendship and how much Herbert meant to me. Thank you, Herbert, for your friendship. I will always miss you forever and never forget all the time together. Rest in peace. Love you always, your friend, Leonora. Coven Aragon. Uh, son of Anna Aragon and uh, the cousin of Beatrice, my cousin in Venice, and I welcome the whole family. I come to give my tribute to my family. It's my, <clears throat> not only my cousin, I can always say he was my brother my friend, my doctor, my detective. He meant so much to me, you know. Um, on behalf of my friends like Mark, Dennis, and, um, and Kenneth, Kenneth and, Kenneth and all the other guys that I can't even remember right now, but I know I come to say this tribute to all, all of you guys, man, guys. He's such a great loss. He was a giant in the family. He was a, he's the one everybody looks up to, you know? Um, how about there's a friend that, when he says he's a friend, he's a real friend, you know? And he carried his name by the name of Tony, and everybody always wonder where he got his name Tony from. And um, as a young man growing up in St. Thomas, my, my cousin, him and Dennis, we were very close. And um, we met this guy that was in the Navy. And um, it was a strange guy. Um, I was kind of scared of him, but I about, wanted to be his friend. And um, he spoke to him, and he would go to meet him every night. And the guy was very intelligent, very smart person. And his name was Tony. And he and Tony became very close, you know. and. Um, Tony taught him a lot about, because Tony also was a Navy guy, a veteran guy from the Navy, and he was from Cuba. And um, he taught him a lot of skillful fights and um, techniques and things like that, and I got very interested in him. And um, I adopted that name Tony, because all of a sudden Tony disappeared. We never know where Tony left and went to. I never went back to Cuba or what happened to him, but when Tony left St. Thomas, how about became Tony, you know? And remembers of that friend, and um, he joined the Navy of this guy, this guy and that he got that name from Tony, you know, he carried that name forever because of his friend, you know. And that's the kind of person he was, you know. He was a dear friend, a brother to everyone, you know. And um, there's so many memories, you know. I remember when I came to New York to live, and how about I just finished the Navy? Um, he was living in California, and I was in New York, and he was so excited to know that I had been to the United States and left St. Thomas and come to America to do something different with my life and improve in my life. And he drove from California for 19 hours just to re reunite here with me. And um, he came here and he loved New York and just we reside and, um, and live here ever since, you know? Since I got left and went back to St. Thomas and we stayed in close contact as family. And I had the privilege of being here in November of this year, last year, November, and I spent three weeks with him and his twin sister, Lettuce, and um, and his son, Tariq, and Cleve, and my son came over and everybody had a great time, and um, it was a great reunion, you know, and um, he was working so much tireless hours and stuff like that, and he would come over 
so often and spend so many time with me and I was running in my mind, how about, you know, you're so tired, why don't you go and get some rest? But I never said anything to him and now that um, he's gone and stuff like that, I could treasure all those last moments I had with him and remember for the rest of my life, you know, and, um, and treasure them. And I'm grateful for that. And on behalf of my sister and brothers, um, Eustace Harrigan and um, Sharon, Lynn Adelphia, my daughter Olenka, I love him dearly, my niece, um, Carly Harrigan, said his love. You know, there's so many good things to remember, man. He was, he was young, very young, in this field, and he took a responsibility and he saved my cousin's life, um, Olenets, and he took her in his arm and he, oh man, there's so many good things to remember, you know, but. All I can see my cousin, rest in peace. I love you. I remember you forever, man. You'll always be my heart. You'll always be my doctor, always be my lawyer, man. Love you. Rest in peace.
special man very lively always smiling he will ask pastor how are you doing so I'm doing very well and I was also blessed to actually uh, marry them uh, Tony and his dear wife Lalene he started coming even to uh, one of our churches here in the city, uh, the one here in the Bronx, used to come with uh, the son when he was very, very young at that time. But it was very special, and as I said, I don't have to go into it because you said all, oh, very compassionate, loving, caring, very passionate in the things that he did. When he started school, uh, he called me and we would talk together sometimes nights. When I was tough, his pastor needed prayer. And uh, we would be on the phone and uh, we pray. Uh, I pray with him and uh, sometimes I call and find how he's doing. It's fine. By the time for exams, he called, we would pray together and thank God that he came. He loved education. And as uh, uh, his son and the uh, and then he said that uh, he was an instrument in, in your own lives as regards to education and living love to the fullest. And not only that, but he also lived to save others. And he would crack jokes. Uh, and we would love on the phone. He served others, put uh, his life at risk as uh, the sister came here and articulated very well that he replied them that this is calling and therefore he was ready to save others. But the question that perhaps you and I will ask why God, why did you take him as such a wonderful man? Not only this country, but even those who know him in Aguila. Why so soon? And like some of you, I was shocked when uh, his dear wife, Lillian, called me and said, Pastor Tony is going to be with the Lord. So what? Sometimes we, th we try our best to make sense of these things, but yet we come to realize that God is sovereign. In his sovereignty, he does things. 
And I always say that, remember they say that as ocean by the ship, so God controls every motion of life. God called Tony home. But it's a time when we feel pain and headache and And loss, we can only turn to God's word that will give us hope and the assurance, comfort, and encouragement and victory. It's victory because of the remarks that were given, the work he did, the life that he touched, the way that he made it for others and put himself on harm's way. And the scripture that I read earlier on from Thessalonians, Apostle Paul wrote that letter to encourage and to give hope for those church brethren who have also lost their loved ones who thought that they were perished forever. So they were grieving and crying, never know what to do. But Paul wrote that to encourage them, and he told them that, their loved ones have not perished. Because one, death is not the end of life. So I can say, Tony, this is not the end of Tony. I can always, I can say goodbye. I can say good night. <clears throat> because death is not the end of life. The departed ones who have gone before us and not perish, they are sleeping. So neither the saint or a sinner is death a cessation of life. Death is just a transition. I'm from Africa, Ghana. When sometime I'm going home and I take a plane and I don't take direct flight, I will take KLM and I will transition in Amsterdam. But that's not my destination. I have to wait until the plane takes me to Ghana. So it's death. Death is not the end of life. But there is life after death. Life after death. Job asked a question, and in his pain and agony and suffering, he has a question. Shall a man live after death? If a man dies, will he live again? Is Tony going to live again? But Jesus answered the question in the book of Luke and when he gave about the rich man and Lazarus. They all lived their lives the way that they love to live. They all died. But that was not the end of their lives either. For Jesus said that the poor man find himself in the bosom of Abraham was actually heaven. And the rich man who lived his life to himself find himself in hell. And Asking grace from the poor Lazarus. So, which means that death is not the end of life. We shall live again as a, a saint or a sinner. And that's what Paul was telling them that those who we're crying, they say, don't cry like those who have no hope. Weep not as those who have no hope. But the Christian, those who believe in Christ, know that after death there is a resurrection coming where we will be resurrected and be with the Lord forever. And the Bible says that at that time, coronavirus will have no power on anyone. Because we shall put on this mortal body and put on immortality, we put on this corrupt body 
and put on in corruption. That is what we are looking for. So everything that uh, Tony, Mr. Herbert did is not in vain. It's not even let us continue ahead. The son said they are going to continue the legacy that he left behind, the good things. How he loved people, how he cared for people. His love, his compassion, his faithfulness, his honesty. He was transparent. I listened to every word that was said here. Let us continue that there should be a continuity of that life. Because one day, guess what? The trumpet will run, will sound. And we shall be lifted up. Where death will, will be destroyed and there will be no more sickness or pain or suffering. So today, I will ask you that it's very important for us to, 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 to know as we look at him Tomorrow, it may not be him, maybe you, or maybe I, myself here. Which means that we all here today, we need to live with expectation to die. In a text that the sister read, he was not afraid of death. He said he's doing what he has called to do. And when the time comes, he goes home. So we all understand that we will live with an expectation to die. We shall all die. The Bible says it's appointed for my wants to die. All of us. I will die. You will die. But after death, the judgment. So we have to have that concept in us, the conviction that we will die one day. So we should live with expectation to die. But not only that. We must also die with expectation to live. Since death is not the end of life. So if death is not the, 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 the end of life, then we must also live, die with an expectation to live. In other words, that the rich man and, and Lazarus both died, both lived, but they went to deep, two different places. The man loved the Lord. So as we live here today and go to the cemetery, he's finished his work. The curtain were rolled. He came to the stage, he performed his part. He did very well. Everybody who knew him have spoken well about him. Now the curtain in front. We are going to give his body a rest until the day of his resurrection. So I encourage you this afternoon as we go, think about your own mortality. Where would you be when you wake up from death? And that's what Paul was saying. We should encourage one another with these ways. Because we shall rise again. Make sure that you choose the right life here now before death knocks at your door. And the, the right life is Jesus Christ. The, Daniel, the prophet Daniel said, go to him, go and sleep, old Daniel, prophet. When the time comes, I will lift you up. And all those who are asleep, like Tony, some will be raised to everlasting life and some will be raised to everlasting contempt with the damnation. And we all want to be part of those who will be raised together when the trumpet comes and found our place in the bosom of Christ. May the Lord strengthen you today. Help you to deal with your loss. We all mourn. We ache. We trust that the Lord will be. So the Lord strengthen you, Lelene, and all the children, the siblings, and 
the nephew, the nieces, and entire family, friends who are here. God bless you. Please uh, uh, rise up as I pray. Sovereign Lord, you who live forever, you reign forever. The God of all comfort and grace, in time of pain and agony and grief and sorrow, you said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Today, Lord, even as you stood by the grave of Lazarus, the Bible said you wept. Lord, you understood the pain, the sadness that gripped the heart when we lose a loved one. Today, Lord, as I lift up my hand, I commit, O oh God, Your servant wife, Lerlene, the children, the sons, the daughters, her brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, aunts, friends and co-workers who are here to thy care, and all those who are watching from afar who could not come because of the situation. Oh, God of comfort and love, may you lay thy hands upon them, touch them. God of comfort, you will comfort us in time like this. God of mercy, God of compassion, love. When they come buried and tears are flowing, wipe their tears. Speak to them, O oh God, the words of comfort. And let them feel the sense of belonging that you be with them. Cover them. Protect them. Go with them. Strengthen them. And heal them of this pain. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to share the prediction and then after that I'll call the for the director to come. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everybody. This is a poem called Our Brother. Um, it's on behalf of Gladys Nelsis, Uncle Hubbard's older home sister. But it's basically from for her and her siblings. A man of respect, a man of dignity, a man always caring for humanity. Our brother, Dr. Herbert Stoddard, known to many as Tony, this time of your passing has our hearts so lonely. To those in Anguilla, he was known as Bonus. He was the youngest of all the boys, but acted like the oldest. At a very young age, Herbert acted like a doctor. When there was an emergency, he was the first on the scene to prescribe the remedy. Going to Jung's Hole to fish was his favorite thing to do. 
then most certainly he would bring home a fish or two. He is gone, too soon, so unexpected. A brother who kept us safe and protected. Looking at his picture brings a tear and a smile. Our brother was courageous and strong, not to mention kind. Our brother was serious at work, yet silly at play, and always had something funny to say. Our brother is now in a heavenly home, rejoicing with the angels around God's throne. Joining our mom, Mother B, what a rejoicing that must be. How about our mommy in heavenly glee? A great brother, husband, uncle, and friend to all the lives he has touched. Our hero, we love him oh so much. Hubbard will always be in our hearts. Your memory from us will never depart. Hubbard has left behind a legacy, one that will be rem remembered for all eternity. Thy sis, Gladys Nice. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Good afternoon. Greetings, family, once more. Uh, and we, of course, are grateful for the family who, of course, have afforded to it during this uh, time of sorrow to, of course, share their tribute and their sentiment uh, regarding their loved one. Uh, we've come, of course, to the closure of these ceremonies, but, of course, the funeral tradition still continues. We do have to meet a timeline at Kensico Cemetery, but we do not want to, of course, take away sort of feeling your hearts and we know usually we could gain that by the final viewing. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity now to do that aspect of the service and then journey forth immediately after that to Kensico Cemetery. I ask you all to please cooperate and remain in your seats as you've done in a dignified manner the entire morning into the afternoon. My assistant, Brother Tyrone, funeral director, assistant in the rear, see him in the back. He'll have each and every one of you come up row by row to say your parting physical farewell. Uh, we have some other family, uh, friends or relatives, if I may, outside as well, so we want to give them an opportunity as well before we uh, go ahead and journey forth to Valhalla for the interment services. Family, once again, my sincere sympathies. Uh, from a fellow veteran myself, I'm grateful, of course, for his sacrifice, his time put into his nation, and of course, the time that it took away from his, uh, his presence with his family during those years that he served. And more importantly, from everything that uh, I heard, and of course reading this obituary, uh, there's many things I could say as well, but for the sake of having you have your opportunity to uh, find your closure, I must say I must respect and admire the way in he went ahead and journeyed forth in this life, that he not be judged justly and mercifully in the next life. So you rest well, Brother Tony. You rest well from all your labor. Pastor Isaac, we thank you so much for ministering to us on this day, your compassion, and of course, I think you'll be joining us at Kensico as well, so he'll continue on with the communal portion there, and of course, our way, you won't be with us, but we thank you for your beautiful sounds on this day. Thank you so much for uh, trying to boost up our spirits on this day. Thank you so much. At this time, Brother Tyrone, please take it over. Family, we need to journey forth immediately once we conclude the viewing, okay? Thank you all.